Hey everyone, this is Eric at Ground Pounder Off-Road. We're going to do an install today of our heavy duty Juggernaut series uh, tie rod steering kit for the 1000 XP in the turbo. Uh, the kit will come with 3 8 wall Dom rods and chrome molly rod ends, Heim joints, whatever you want to call them. Uh, we're using a chrome molly steering stud, probably the strongest on the market. We only use cap head screws on all the components that we install on these kits because they're stronger than grade eight. You've seen the grade eight stuff bend. We're using a uh, chrome molly clevis, again with a cap head screw. What's kind of unique about these is one of the problems I saw was boots not being put back on, on the steering, or boots being torn up because of bolts sticking up. So what I've gone with on this design is we, we decided what we wanted to do is put a button head on it and it's, this is actually threaded on both sides so you get a lot of engagement and a lot of rigidity because it's pulling itself tight uh, across the material rather than trying to squeeze it. Uh, it's one continuous thread in fact. Either way when you get it all locked in you have a nice smooth surface and the boot will slide right across the top of it so there's no snags, no wear, no goofiness, no fighting, uh, minimal cussing, putting it on. But in a long life, we're keeping the grease greasy and water and debris free. <clears throat> to get started, uh, I'll just give you a quick overview of this machine. This is a 2016 Turbo. It's a shop razor. We call him Rocco. Uh, he's a test bed for all these parts. He's been through a lot over the last few months. Uh, SRS racing, straight up series bounty racing. He's done really well. We've crushed a cage, uh, came out with our own cage. It'll be on the market soon as a knockdown kit. So it'll be really cheap. You guys can order it and install it yourself. Um, we bent aftermarket control arms and had to put the stock one on and get him back in a race. We've uh, had steering, we've had to pull off for other competitors that had a better chance of winning points races. So this unit actually has the steering all ready to go and uh, this side's been swapped back. So it'll come apart a little easier maybe than your own, but. The overview is the same and I'll hit some high points on it uh, that you might need to look out for when you're putting everything together the first time. Um, to start with, let's go over some tools. Basic stuff, if you've ever worked on a razor, you know where I'm at. Obviously the machine's been tore down to a certain point. You need a 15 millimeter to take the stock loose. Whatever style lug nut you have, race nuts or standard nuts, 14 millimeter, what have you. Once you get this machine jacked up and supported on jack stands and the jack out of the way, you can go ahead and take the shock off and then we'll pull the tie rod off. So we've got a 15 millimeter wrench, 15 millimeter socket, an 18 millimeter socket, a pair of channel locks and some side cutters. The kit will come with the rods for both sides, all your spacers, your clevises, lock tight, all of the, that. The only thing that's gonna be unusual that you'll need for the kit is this half inch Allen. You can pick them up at uh, some of the like Harbor Freight, Northern Tool will have them. I don't know if uh, Lowe's or Home Depot or anything like that will stock them. We're gonna try to have these in stock. Uh, so if you wanna order it when you order the kit, you'll be able to just pick this up with it. Uh, the other sizes you'll need is a 7 30 seconds Allen and a 5 16 Allen. I'm gonna show you those here in a few minutes when we get to it. So the first thing we're gonna do, take our 18, we're gonna pop the tie rod loose. to keep all your old parts together. Like we found out, sometimes you gotta loan parts to other racers, or sometimes buddies to get them off the trail. So stock parts are nice for those guys that haven't upgraded to the good stuff. All right, so we're gonna take the bikes, side cutters, whatever you got, get it up on the head of that zip tie, clip it, throw it away so you won't be reusing it. Slide on out and you just pull the accordion boot in it. Slide right off. Now, see this on the camera, you've got this factory joint. This one has flats on it. Okay, some of them will have flats, some of them will not. We've got the factory boot out of the way and you can see the factory steering joint. This is what will be replaced from there out. If you'll notice back here is a white spacer. This is like your steering stop, basically. Make sure you don't have it on the back of this because it will stick to it. It does float along on the shaft. 
push it back out of the way. Some of these are going to have red Loctite, some of them have a lighter Loctite, and you can turn them off by hand. If they're red, they're going to need heat. Like I said, all this stuff's been apart before. We put everything back in order to get it done. Uh, loaning out parts and everything to keep other racers running. It's just good sportsmanship and, you know, it's part of growing a business. You want people to know you're reliable. So we wanted to let everybody know that, hey, we're here to help not just the sport, but also the competitors. So this one ended up with stock steering back on it. And uh, what we've got to do is remove it. If you've got red Loctite, you'll need to heat it. These small little butane torches you pick up at uh, any home improvement store basically work great. Keep the flame back away from the edge. Don't touch the metal with it. Keep it about a half inch to an inch away. You'll see it start to smoke when you get the, uh, you get the part hot enough and it should turn right off at that point with a good set of channel locks or if you have an enormous wrench for whatever reason, you can use that or a pipe wrench if you can finagle it in there and maybe take the arm off. All right, so we're gonna heat it up so we can get it loose. See if we can pop it loose. There we go. Okay. So you see right here, this is your factory stud. So when you got the heat going, keep the heat just behind it on the rack itself. That's what I was saying, you don't wanna heat this up directly, it'll melt the rubber or nylon on the inside. You just want the heat right here at the back so it gets on the studs, okay? And it should turn right out at that point. All right, at this point, you just wanna take, this is hot, be aware, remember you just got it really hot. Take your old rag and just wipe the edge of that off. There may be some leftover Loctite and get it cleaned off. <clears throat> and here in just a second, we'll come back and uh, we'll go over how to assemble the boot onto the uh, juggernaut rod. And we'll show you the, uh, the last couple steps. The whole process doesn't take maybe 20 minutes per side at the most. Okay, so here we go. You've got this off, the reuse this boot if you're not replacing it, like this one's in good shape. Uh, no damage to it. The snap ring has to come off. It's just a little plastic deal. Pry it up and it pops off and this boot will move. Back here you're going to need a 14 millimeter on a wrench flat and a 22. Um, these are left and right, of course, and why would it be normal? But uh, it is, believe it or not. So you just lefty loosey, just like normal. Pop this guy loose and then you can just unscrew him because he's left threads, all right? So it's not lefty loosey like everybody wants it to be. That would be too easy. So just turn it to the right to get everything off. Once you got everything off, you can just pull that off. Remember that may still be warm, so don't burn yourself. Again, like I said earlier, it's just a personal preference, but I try to keep some of this stuff together because you never know when you're gonna need it. Or someone else more than likely is gonna need it. It'd be a good selling point. You can say, hey, I didn't bend my stuff. Here's my old junk. Go buy you some good stuff so you're not holding us up on the trail anymore. All right. Just push that back out. You can see the small exposure. Now, there's two small bushings on the clevis side, on the machine side. What we've done is we've uh, made these left and right so you can adjust the toe. What you'll have to do when you get them is you'll have to assemble this with your boot on it. And the best thing to do that I've found with these 
to go ahead and take this once you get these guys apart is to go ahead and assemble the clevis to the machine once you have it on there go ahead and assemble your rod end on with the spacers put your loctite on all these bolts assemble everything and then this will slide on so i'm going to show you that we're going to move the camera to give you a better view and we'll be right back all right first thing i'm going to do is you're going to take the little thing of loctite this is not what will come with it uh, this is just what we use here in the shop because we do a lot of this stuff you're going to be real real generous on this because you don't want this working loose i'm going to put a, just a, a slathering of blue loctite on it you can use red if you'd like just remember if you have to take it apart to service the rack uh, it's going to be a real pain and you will have to heat it. We've been through that. It's not hard, but I know this machine will probably have it back apart for some other thing. Actually, I know for a fact it will, but you'll get the idea. Okay, something I forgot to mention just a second ago, so we stopped to make sure I'd done it right. Uh, and I did not, I needed to reverse this. When you get the clevis, you'll notice one side has, a, side has a relief machine in it, and that is to actually clear the shoulder of the bolt so it sits completely flush and locks down. Uh, when you go to assemble it, make sure that's correct. Once you get it on there, you can snug it up. Okay. Go ahead and add your Loctite to the bottom. Take your hind. Put your small reducers on it. They're not specific. There's no left or right or top or bottom. They're the same. Slide it in here and get it lined up. hand out of the way so you can see. Okay. I'm getting close to the bottom so I'm going to take another dab of blue Loctite. Put it on there. it on here there we go nice and flush it ain't going anywhere all right so now what we're gonna do we're gonna install this this is going to be super tight going over that 5 8 uh, rod in, but it will fit. And hang on just a second, we'll change where we're sitting for the camera so you can see it better. It slides over. I would recommend putting just a little bit of the lube on it. Uh, Hilco lube or something along those lines will work great just to help it slide on. So give us a second, we'll be right back. All right, so we're going to start by spraying just a little bit of lube on the uh, inside. All right, just down inside there to give it a little loop and then just put a drop on here. That's going to help us slide on across these threads. So, there we go. All right, that's on there. Take our jam nut. This is going to be left hand thread, so you'll have to turn it backwards. All right, on these rods, 
it'll come to you. It'll be raw. There will be just a little bit of anti-seize down inside the threads. Uh, that's something that we're kind of unique for. I know how important it is. These machines are out in the dirt and trash gets everywhere and will rust and cause these himes to lock up. You're more likely to have one lock up on a machine like this uh, without anti-seize on it because of what they're exposed to and what we put them through, all right? Um, <clears throat> but now we're at the point where what we're gonna do, we're gonna screw this back on. Remember, again, this is left-hand thread, so you gotta go left to get him to screw on. If you want to paint these or whatever, of course you'll do this before that. Like I said, this machine will be back apart before we know it for a, a power steering change. Something we've seen done a few times here lately and it's impressed us we're gonna do it on this guy. And if it works out, we'll try to offer something for you guys to do it at home yourself. It's like all these parts are meant to be do it yourself install so you guys know your machine better than anybody else at that point you know you're familiar with it because you did all the work on it i know i enjoy that personally i like knowing that i can work on my own piece of equipment all right so that's up there we're going to attach the boot last right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and attach the knuckle so we're gonna take this slide 18 millimeter, it's a nylock, just like your factory one. Turn the knuckle to get him where we need him. All right. Slide the nut on the bottom. Good and tight. I use that 5 sixteenths up here. This comes with Loctite already on it, so you don't have to mess with it. All right, that's starting to turn on me, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the 18 millimeter main impact. It's getting tight, tight king pin down. Snug it up, Loctite will lock it in. We'll go ahead and hit this one more time. All right, so we're attached. I'll take the steering wheel. We'll turn this all the way to the right in this case. You see, we've got an exposed section up here. See how easy that boot slides over that nut? That's really nice. We'll turn it back in just a little bit to get the tension off so I don't have to pull as hard on the boot. I'm gonna get on my creeper. So give me just a second and we'll change the camera so you can get a better view of what I'm doing. It's not hard. This is something I know a lot of people dread, but uh, if you just take a couple seconds, get it lined up, you're good. So hang on a sec, we'll be right back. All right, so we've got everything ready to slide back on. Um, you can put a little loop on the edge of this boot. I like to start it at the top and you can just sort of twist it. You'll feel it move and you can watch it slide down. Sometimes if you've got a little pick, like a 90 degree pick, that's really handy right now too. But if you don't, you can just sort of massage it in there, so to speak. All those you dirty minds, you know what I'm talking about here, just slide it on there. Ah, oh. there we go. Okay, I'm gonna turn it on the stud here. And make sure I'm good. And I am. All right. So, a nice, even sit. It's sitting back against the rack. It's on that little groove. You take your new zip tie from the kit. You're gonna slide that right there. Cross it. Now, fish it onto that lip at the very back, just like the original zip tie was sitting. Make sure it's pulled smoothly. Reach up there with your finger and you'll feel it. Make sure it's not binding or slipping off. 
and then you can pull it straight. Don't pull back towards you because you'll pull it off the top or the opposite side of where you're at. All right. All right. So that's on there. It's fully tight. Clip off your excess. You see everything's nice and smooth. There's nothing hanging up on it, which won't tear this way. The kit comes with two zip ties. Uh, you're welcome to install it here. Really don't need to because it can't go past the jam nut, forward or back. Once you adjust it, this will be a little further out more than likely, but it should be pretty close factory. Uh, but you can put it back on if you'd like. It's totally up to you. Um, I'm going to take this back off here shortly, so I'm just going to leave it off for right now. But normally I would suggest probably putting that on once you get the, the toe end set on the machine. So give me just a second. I'm going to get back up here and we'll talk about setting the toe real quick. All right. So we've machined in a wrench flat. It's for a one inch wrench. If you don't have a one inch wrench, an adjustable will work just fine. We made it wide enough for a standard adjustable. It's an inch and a quarter down to zero. So we should be good to go there. Uh, to set the toe in, it's just like a factory setup. I'm not sure if it's in the manuals or not, but it's of course online. You can watch the guy do it from Polaris on one of the tech videos. You're gonna wanna take, switch your tire back on, uh, lower the vehicle on its weight, drive it back, drive it forwards, put it in park, and then you're gonna measure the inside of the tire and the back side of the tire and get them the same width unless you purposely are setting toe in on it for racing reasons and that sort of thing or suspension travel. Uh, but anyway, you just need a, a one inch and you'll turn it you know, forward or back to adjust it in or out. The setup it comes at lengthwise, you should be real close with about two threads showing um, on this outside. That of course you'll push it down till it's flush and then screw the rod on till the nut stops. Uh, anyway, so that's an overview of this install. It shows all the highlights. I think I gave you a, hopefully a good heads up on what tools you need. Like I said, in general, it's going to take about 20 minutes per side. Um, nothing exorbitant that you'll need to have that you probably don't already have other than a half inch Allen. And like I said, hopefully we'll have those available so you can order them when you order the kit. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope it helps you out. Uh, if we can be of any service, give us a call, let us know, shoot us an email. We have a lot of new products coming out for the do-it-yourself or for these, these machines. Uh, maybe even some stuff for the Ace and Can-Am X3. We'll see how things go. Uh, hope to see you guys at the SRS races, the Pro UTV races. Come out and check them out um, and hopefully see you out on the trail having fun. Thanks.